John McCain's comments, he was just talking to a group of reporters uh, on Capitol Hill talking about uh, the Orlando attacks. And he, what he said repeatedly is that Barack Obama is directly responsible for the attacks uh, in Orlando. And why did he say that? Is because he said of Barack Obama's national security policies, particularly involving uh, what happened in Iraq. He said that uh, Barack Obama pulled troops out of Iraq. And what happened then? Then al-Qaeda moved to Syria. So then it became ISIS. ISIS grew powerful. And at that point, he warned that there would be more attacks on the United States. He said if Barack Obama did not, if Barack Obama had actually maintained higher troop levels in Iraq, if he actually did not withdraw troops, then this country would be much more secure. Then there would not have been attacks against this country. That's the point that he was trying to make. He said several times Barack Obama is directly responsible for what happened in Orlando because of his failures in Iraq. And John McCain's words, very, very strong statements coming from the 2008 Republican presidential nominee just shows how much tension there is on Capitol Hill. And one reason why it's very difficult to get any deal on guns or any sort of gun issue because both sides are very, very far apart on this. But John McCain, some very strong words. John McCain tweeted uh, what he called a clarification. Here's what he said. To clarify, I was referring to President Obama's national security decisions that have led to the rise of ISIL, not to the president himself. Uh, clearly understood uh, that maybe in the heat of the moment, talking to reporters, um, seeming to blame the president for such a horrific uh, shooting and massacre, not to mention, as you said, just moments before the president and the vice president are actually there and will make remarks is probably uh, not, not the best idea. Ron Johnson, he chairs the Senate Homeland Security Committee. Senator Johnson, thank you for joining us. Hello, Jim. Uh, now, Senator, your office discovered multiple Facebook accounts associated with the Orlando terrorists. This is key because we've now learned that he was posting to Facebook uh, and, and checking Facebook out, in effect, in the middle of this attack. I know you've now sent a letter to the Facebook CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, asking for more information on posts in which this terrorist swore allegiance to ISIS. What can you tell us about what this terrorist did on Facebook before this attack? And also, is Facebook answering your request now? Well, let, let me first say, I really appreciate the fact that President Obama went down to Orlando to, to really offer a nation's condolences for that tragedy. Uh, it's something we are almost becoming numb. These, these tragedies are, are becoming so frequent. And so I really appreciate the president uh, going about doing that. From my standpoint, uh, I'm chairman of the Senate Committee of Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, which is the Senate's oversight committee. And so, you know, we are basically trying to go through a very thoughtful process of, of gaining access to the information, what, what happened, particularly what transpired before this terrorist attack, so we can accumulate that information, compare it to what happened before San Bernardino, Fort Hood, Texas, Chattanooga, Tennessee. What went right, for example, in terms of the foiled plot in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, against the Masonic Temple. So, you know, I realize hindsight is perfect. It's Monday morning quarterbacking, but it's really our job. I know Director Comey's doing it. I know Secretary Johnson is. I know this administration is doing it. This is our job to see what, what has happened in the past. What can we possibly do to prevent this? Uh, from occurring in the future, and how can we find bipartisan solutions? That, that's, I'm trying to find areas of agreement to prevent these tragedies from happening in the, in the future. Well, let, let me thank you for that sentiment. Republican senator thanking the Democratic president. Uh, exactly that kind of coming together, as you say, is what I think the nation is looking for right now. But let me ask you, as you reach out to Facebook, is it your fear uh, that, that Facebook makes it too easy for attackers like this and others to, 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 to spout hate and to, to advertise their crimes in effect on Facebook. Is that your fear? No, let's face it. We're in the information age and the social media is, is exploded onto the scene here and people use it. And I think what we need to find out, can our intelligence gathering capabilities, can our law enforcement officials, can we figure out how to gain access to that, monitor it so that we can prevent these tragedies? You know, I don't know what I don't know. So we're just sending out a, a number of oversight letters to Loretta Lynch, to Secretary Johnson, to Director Comey. Uh, we'll send more. We send one to Facebook here. So again, we're just trying to accumulate that information so we can be, basically do an after action report and see what we can do on a bipartisan basis to prevent these tragedies. And we know social media is not a tangential issue, as the president said and counter-terror officials say all the time. 
that may be enough to radicalize people and lead to an attack like this. I do want to ask you something about what something Senator John McCain said earlier today about Orlando. He told reporters the following, quote, Barack Obama is directly responsible for it, speaking about Orlando, because when he pulled everybody out of Iraq, Al-Qaeda went to Syria, became ISIS, and ISIS is what it is today, thanks to Barack Obama's failures, utter failures, he continues, by pulling everybody out of Iraq, thinking that conflicts end just because you leave. So, again, in his words, the responsibility for it lies with President Barack Obama and his failed policies. Do you agree with your fellow Republican senator that President Obama, or at least his policy, policies, bear responsibility for this terrorist act? Well, obviously, the responsibility lies with the terrorist. The responsibility lies with Islamic terrorists. And, of course, ISIS is, is one of the uh, groups that uh, is inspiring this. So, you know, what I want to do is I want to support President Obama's stated goal of defeating ISIS. The problem, and this is Senator McCain's frustration, which I share and I think most Americans share, President Obama stated that goal 22 months ago. And, yeah, we're, we're making some progress, but the analogy I use is let's say you have a beehive in your backyard. You can go out in the backyard and poke with a stick and do some damage to the hive, but you're kind of stirring up the hive. What you ought to do is take out the hive. We have to destroy ISIS. We have got to fully commit the civilized world to tenaciously, relentlessly find Islamic terrorists wherever they reside and defeat them and destroy them or else this is going to continue. And what's depressing about this is the increased frequency of these attacks around the world and here in America. So you're saying you need a further effort to fight ISIS, but, but you, you disagree with Senator McCain that the president is personally responsible in part for this attack? Well, I believe it's a historic blunder, a strategic blunder, bugging out of Iraq, not leaving a stabilizing force behind so that ISIS could rise from what was the defeated uh, ashes of al-Qaeda in Iraq. So, I mean, this president's policies certainly have, have not panned out in the Middle East. I mean, we, we are witnessing a genocide in Syria. You know, when, just a couple of years ago, it was just a couple hundred Syrians slaughtered. Now almost a half a million Syrians slaughtered. We see this migration flow, this refugee problem. We're seeing ISIS continue to exist and inspire this kind of behavior, directing it. We have evidence that they directed the Brussels attack. So Islamic terrorism is growing. It's real. It's metastasizing. It's evolving. And we are not adequately addressing. I mean, I, I certainly agree with that. We are not adequately addressing. We are not fully committed to its defeat. And we don't have an urgency about it. We have got to become more urgent. Ultimately, defeating isn't good enough. We must urgently defeat ISIS. I had the opportunity a few minutes ago to speak with Adam Schiff, of course, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. And he has called for the administration to create a new alert system that would notify law enforcement when anyone either currently under investigation for terrorism or previously under investigation for terrorism or terrorist sympathizing would be on some list and they'd be prevented from buying a gun. That, for instance, in this case, would have tipped off the FBI to, to his gun buys the week before this massacre. I wonder uh, if you support an idea like that. Listen, we all agree that nobody, no Republican, no Democrat, no American wants terrorists or would-be terrorists to have access to buying a gun. Now, the question is, what list, what constitutional rights are we going to be denying people? How, how can we protect constitutional rights, due process, and develop a list that will actually work? And, and quite honestly, what kind of procedures are the FBI going through? You know, this terrorist was on the watch list. They conclude, conclude the investigation, took him off the list. So we, we need to understand this database, the, the various subsets of lists underneath it, how they're being used by law enforcement. Let's make sure we don't hamper a potential probe. Let's not, let's not blow a particular investigation. So these are far more complex issues than what the political process is really talking about them right now. Let's thoughtfully try and find the agreement on a shared goal of keeping guns and other weapons out of the hands of terrorists. But again, the main focus because the root cause is destroying and defeating ISIS and Islamic terror. Because as long as they exist, I'm, I'm, af I'm afraid they're going to find some way, shape, or form of slaughtering innocents around the world. So we got to address the root cause. To a certain extent, th these other things are, are taking our eye off that imperative. Senator Ron Johnson, Republican Chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, thanks very much for joining us today. Have a good day.